It's a mini split day. Here are some of the tools I'm going to be using and supplies. 12-2. This is what's going to run my 20 amp circuit. Two hots and a ground. Staples. This runs inside the basement, pops out of the house, and goes into a disconnect. Out of the disconnect, you use your flex line, and this goes into the outside condenser unit. Um, over here, we've got our vacuum pump and our vacuum gauges. I'll show you more about that later. Um, you're going to need this little gadget right here. This is an adapter. This goes on your blue line. When you get to using your vacuum pump and your gauges, you're in the home stretch. Just about everything is done when you get these out. So if you made it that far, you've done good. Uh, these here are knockout reducers or reducing washers. A lot of times when you smack out these knockouts here, eh, well, you have a blowout. And you got to repair that blowout so that you can put your waterproof, watertight connections in. These go into the flex. I'm going to jump right into this, get wiring, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. I've been doing a lot of these lately. These are all, all the tools I brought with me. Uh, I got a couple wrenches for the line sets. This is a new brand that I'm working with, Turbro. Turbro, T-U-R-B-R-O. We've got 12,000 BTU, 230 volts. Inside unit, outside unit. Hopefully it's identical to the other ones that I've used because I think they're all made in the same place. This is the first one that has had a template, makes it idiot proof. Welcome back everybody. Got a great video for you today. It's about the future. They've been telling us it's coming. Everything is going to be changing to heat pumps. So in this video, I'm going to be installing a heat pump air conditioning and heating unit. It does both. It cools and it heats. New regulations coming out say they want your water heater to now be a heat pump water heater. As I said earlier in the start of the video, this is a turbo. I think that's how you pronounce it. T-U-R-B-R-O. Turbo or turbo. It is a higher quality system than I have installed in the past. There were some noticeable differences that I'm going to go over. First thing was the template. Do you really need a template? Not really, but it does help the DIYer who is not super confident with the tape measure and drills and things like that. Um, I did use it just to test it out, see if it helped me out. It gave me an idea of where the full unit was going to go. When you are placing this on the wall, there's a lot of things you got to look out for. You got to look out for plumbing that could be in the wall. You got to look out for the studs because you want your bracket to go into a stud but you want your hole for the line sets and the electricity to miss a stud. Measure many times, drill once. I've drilled from the inside out, then did a pilot hole at a slight angle, and here I am drilling from the outside in. This is gonna be the hole for your cooling lines, your condensation drain line, and the, the cable that provides the electricity for the inside head unit. So here we are on the inside, little, the little dog there. Um, you have to connect the electrical cable on the inside. So you're going to feed it through the back. Very self-explanatory. There are very good instructions on how to do this. Feed it through the back. You just need a screwdriver and use the manual to see what color wires go to what terminals right behind that cover there. It takes just a few minutes. Helps if you have a little supervisor. So here I am stuffing the wire through the hole. This is probably one of the most awkward or difficult things to do. It definitely would help if you had a second hand, uh, but it's definitely not necessary. You see, I'm just holding it up there, getting them all fed through, making sure that the, the condensation drain line is on the bottom part. That is another difference with this unit. The condensation drain hose is on the same side as the line sets. 
So when you fold those line sets out, the condensation line is also going to go out and there's not going to be a seam in the condensation line. You got your line sets going out on one side. You got your drain tube that's got to come all the way over, make the turn and go out. Well, you got to use an extension to plug into that tube and now you have a seam inside the house. You want to avoid having that seam inside the house. Running the electricity was very easy, got lucky. The homeowner had run a 12-3 wire from his panel to the unfinished basement area 20 years ago in anticipation for needing future circuits. So we already had the electricity run through the walls and down into the basement inside a junction box. That's where I was able to connect into the electricity. Uh, the line sets do have a higher end insulation. Not sure if it really helps performance. Typically you just see that black foam that is on the line sets. It all gets wrapped up and covered anyways, but it was nice to see a higher quality uh, insulation on the line sets. Connecting your flared joints is really the only room for error in this entire installation. It's the only step where you could ruin it all and have to call in a professional. The flared fittings, I always use a little bit of sealant. It's called Nylog. You put that on the flare and you tighten it up. Now, how much do you tighten it up? Well, there is a foot pound rating. You could get out your special attachment to go on a torque wrench. If you've done it enough, you just know when you're right at the good snugness. Flared fittings are used in plumbing a lot, so I've done a ton of these brass flared fittings. And you just know when it hit, hits the, the sweet spot where you're not gonna strip it out and it's not too light and it's gonna leak. The brackets that came with this system are an accessory and what they sent out was another noticeable difference in units I've used in the past. This system allows you to put the brackets on the wall anywhere you want so that you can get the studs. Whether it's 24, 16 inches on center, you put those brackets on there. Right here you can see the metal pieces that bolt to the brackets. This allows you to set the unit right down on it and there's slotted holes so that the feet can go where they need to go. The feet on the unit are not 16 inches on center, they're not 24 inches on center. That's why you need those horizontal brackets that attach to the wall brackets. Here I am pulling a vacuum, did that for 30 to 35 minutes, just let it run while I was doing other things. I think it was hooking up the electrical disconnect while it was up on vacuum. That is probably the minimum that you would do. There are a lot of guys who just just do it. They do not evacuate, they don't put the vacuum up there, they just hook up the line sets crack it open and they're done. You can hook nitrogen up to it, put it up on pressure, measure microns. I haven't found that that's needed. I've done quite a few of these. Uh, the longest one has been installed for just over a year. So I am kind of new to it, but there is a very, very short learning curve. So I try not to make it more complicated than it is. The one that it's been up for a year is my personal one. It's been on the wall and it's been run in heat mode more than any other mode and heat mode is double the line pressure than cooling mode. This hooks up to Wi-Fi. You can download a phone app, you can connect this to the phone app, and anywhere you have internet service, you can control this. You can turn it on, turn it off, whatever you want. Puts out ice cold air. So this is the Turbro 
T-U-R-B-R-O, bro. Uh, this is definitely higher quality than anyone I put in before. You can just see the insulation on the line sets. That is something I didn't get to today. I gotta come back tomorrow to put the, the cover over this. Got a whole cover that comes down and over. Got a big storm coming. So come back tomorrow to do the final detail of the track that goes, covers that all up. Disconnect, check your local electrical codes. giving you another last shot of what it looks like on the inside. That's where you change the filter on the top there. You just lift that up and there's a, a screen type filter, a very fine screen. You will get dust that builds up on it. Just take it, take it out, rinse it off, and pop it back in real easy. I'm curious, what's your opinion on this heat pump movement? Do you think it will last? Or do you think it's a short segment of time where this technology takes over gas forced air and traditional high electrical demand air conditioning. Maybe 15, 20 years before the next level of technology replaces that. Is it worth the entire country switching over everything from water heaters to furnaces and air conditioning to heat pumps? Will it last enough to justify how much it costs to switch everything over? That's where I'm on the fence. I just don't know if this is going to be the heat source and the cooling source that's gonna be a 100 year solution, even a 50 year solution. Put your comments down below. What do you think? What's your opinion on heat pumps or mini splits? Thanks for watching. Goodbye.